Hi, this is Trey Parker. And this is Matt Stone. And you're listening to the Pantheon Network. Hey, I'm Nick DiMatteo, and welcome to Season 6, Episode 32 of Music Is Not A Genre, MXG. Getting sloppier with the hand gestures, but, you know, busy, busy week. Busy, busy middle of the year so far. Thank you, as always, for watching and listening. Listeners, please go to youtube.com slash at music is not a genre to see a video for every episode of this podcast. Watchers, go to nickdimatio.com slash music is not a genre. Pick your streaming service if you'd just rather listen. We're still raising funds to, to have a season seven, to beef up season seven. Go to patreon.com slash music is not a genre to pledge a dollar a month uh, or more if you can to help out. It really does help. And you get bonus content, which we'll talk about later. Or just go to GoFundMe if you just want a one-time donation of $5.73 or whatever it is that you can afford. And yes, live catch up episode recording on july 25th i'll give you the exact time and all that stuff soon if you join patreon.com slash music is not a genre you get the link i may disseminate it to some other select people as well i want you to be a part of this discussion so keep that in mind let's get right to the topic what's an album and why part 6.1 the 2000s explosions everywhere so yeah, you know, so it's part 6.1, but really when you think about it, it's like the eighth or ninth part because, you know, I'm dividing all this up. There's just so much material. It's insane. I'm actually exhausted. So why the subtitle? 2000s. It was a pretty quiet transition to the new century, uh, despite Y2K. Nothing seemed to be happening to shake the dominant sales and, and diversity of the 90s. Very few people were expecting any significant changes, honestly, uh, in the music world at least. And then, surprise, we were all blindsided, not just by 9-11, but by the internet, MP3s, and all those thoughts of growing or at least coasting in the age of CDs were torn apart by the end of the decade. You can consider the entire decade a transition, which I'll talk about a lot later, like for vinyl in the 50s and cassettes and CDs in the 80s, that that transition to a new format. The CD mountain was equally steep on both sides. Think of a bell curve disappearing as quickly as it came on, leaving everyone's head spinning and wondering what just happened. So a little foreshadowing for the 6.2 as well, the episode. Album sales themselves went from dominant to negligible, and the amount of sales an artist needed to top the charts was much lower and will continue to drop. Uh, rock music exploded more than in any decade ever. I did an episode on that. That's why I have my uh, one of my electric guitars back there. And then just like CDs which I have behind me, you can see again, this will be the last time for a while you're going to see the inside of my CD cases and of course 2000s, that's why I'm doing it. CDs and all physical music collapsed, so did rock music to a large extent, at least in the popular world. And don't forget, speaking of formats, the bonus M extra video at patreon.com slash music is not a genre is... The history of the digital music format. Once again, and I love saying this, it goes back way further than you think. It's always fun to, to discover that. So usual format for this episode, uh, year by year, with uh, tops in the charts, notable debuts, other notable albums, some conclusions, featured song, questions. Uh, sources, Wikipedia, Digital Dream Door, albumoftheyear.org, rate your music, uh, usual disclaimers, I'm going to miss some things. I'm going to leave out some things on purpose even. I'll be biased to an extent. I may mention things that are my faves. I'll do my best to be as inclusive as possible, as always. Getting right into it year by year. 2000. Decent me mix of music across the board. A big year for pop. Uh, lots of albums from vocal groups. And you may remember that quite a bit of hip hop, including by women. Lots of indie rock, lots of metal and a surprising amount of Christian artists, which had started to really pop up. I mean, they've been around a long time. Uh, Striper, Amy Grant, uh, but, you know, more so in the 90s and actually much more so in the 2000s. As well, international music was just burgeoning, especially from various Asian countries. That was the big influx, one of the first. 
Uh, quite a few older artists putting out great works, which is nice. And okay, amounts of electronic and country as well, though not much notable. Overall, a worthy continuation of 90s diversity and a good way to start the decade. So top albums. This is uh, this is funny, right? So there's 10 years in a decade. Um, uh, that's newsflash. And, you know, most things that have numbers, you think it's one per year. That is not the case for this series. This is a series which you may remember called Now That's What I Call Music, which had been around since the 90s. Now That's What I Call Music 4 debuted at number one in 2000. It was the first time any compilation of hits did this in history. And it's a great mix. And I may say this again, and if so, you, you, you know, you get in double your pleasure. The, one of the reasons why I think this happened is because people were aching for variety. And by that time, Clear Channel had come and radio stations and things were very programmatic. It was hard to find a station that played a mix of everything. And if you're one of those people like me who likes almost everything, you want that mix now that's what I call music for. And it's a great one to put on at parties because then you have a little bit for, you know, for everyone. Uh, you're going to hear this again. Uh, also, compilation of Celine Dion hits reached number one. Madonna's music. Santana with that uh, song Smooth by Rob Thomas. Enough said. Limp Biscuit, Radiohead Kid A. Uh, the Beatles won all their number ones. Uh, hit number one. Uh, D'Angelo's Voodoo, which is, I think, my favorite on this list and maybe my favorite from the entire year of 2000 it made my year i still have memories driving up to new york listening to it uh, that's the year i moved to new york r kelly number one nelly's debut country grammar mystical dmx ja rule jay-z ll cool j all had number one albums backstreet boys had a number one album but the winner for the gear and sinks no strings attached was the number one of the number ones. Some noted debuts, uh, more than in most years. Uh, I, I, so I whittled it down because, and, and I'm, you know, this is something I'm going to be saying a lot for these next two episodes, which is the amount of music that I'll say that the industry released was the most ever in history, and would remain the most ever in history. Now, is there more music now? Of course. As populations increase, music increase, everything increases. But it's mostly indie music where that has happened. Independent releases or non-releases, whatever you want to call it. People just distributing it themselves online. But as far as officially released music, you cannot beat the 2000s. And I don't know if you ever will. Uh, I mean, things will change and, you know, I'll eat my words in 20 years. Who knows? So, some notable debuts. Jill Scott, music, music soul child. Both Philly, neo-soul artists. I loved them both. Sean Paul, Ludacris, Beanie Siegel, Dead Prez. Linkin Park debuted in 2000. Killswitch Engage, Disturbed, Mudvayne, perfect, A Perfect Circle, Lamb of God, Sun with the O. So a lot of hard music. Doves, post-shoegaze band, was, was a favorite of mine for a while. And Honey and the Johnsons, used to be Anthony and the Johnsons, a trans performer. Debuted in 2000. Clinic, Flogging Molly, Thrice, another hard band, Reliant K, who I believe were actually a Christian rock, but more known as kind of, you know, pop rock, whatever, uh, pop punk. Three Doors Down, Kryptonite was their song. Lifehouse, Good Charlotte, Rascal Flats, all debuted in 2000. So did Ryan Adams, Sufjan Stevens, Nelly Furtado, New Pornographers, Phoenix. I didn't know they were around that long. Goldfrap, Badly Drawn Boy, one of my faves. He had put out work before then, but I think official debut, full album was 2000. Dashboard Confessional, huge one for me. Coldplay, huge one for everybody. Pink debuted in 2000. A lot of great debuts. Some other notable, uh, the Marshall Mathers LP, uh, Eminem. Outcast Stankonia, or Stankonia, I don't know. Erica Badu, Mama's Gun, excellent album you look at those right there behind me cd cases it's not in there because a through l is in a different different shelf but it would be in there all right eric because i own mama's gun uh sade lovers rock was was uh well received modest mouse put out a great album so did warren zevon who would die two years later 
Granddaddy, Godspeed you Black Emperor at the drive-in. So a lot of post-emo sort of progressive-ish. Queens of the Stone Age, Johnny Cash, American 3, Sleater Kinney put out a great one. White Stripes, De Stille. The Hives put out a great album that year. AFI, The Art of Drowning. Band has been around way longer than people realize. Green Day's Warning was a good album. Ween, White Pepper, owned that. That's on one of these shelves. Teenage Fan Club, Bell and Sebastian, Fold Your Hands, Child, You Walk Like a Peasant is on these shelves, on the other shelf. Death Cab for Cutie put out a great album. PJ RV Stories from the City, Stories from the Sea. The Sea and Cake, We. I think I have that on this shelf. Elliot Smith, Figure Eight. Also on this shelf, Bright Eyes put out a great album. Apples and Stereo, Discovery of a World Inside the Moon is on the other shelf. U2's All That You Can't Leave Behind is here. And uh, an indie artist named Nick released an EP called What It Is in 2000. That would be me. It is probably my favorite release under my uh, original artist name, Nick. Uh, What It Is. And it has been officially released uh, fully digitally as of last year i believe so you can find it everywhere the what it is ep uh not really easy to search for but you'll find it okay so that brings us to 2001 Uh, again diverse in 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 a disparate but pretty exciting way and keep those words in mind because that's going to be a theme for this decade i contend so 1971 you'll say uh 1984 right? Uh, There was one year in the 90s, I forget which one, maybe 92, 94, something like that. 2001 may be one of the best years in music ever. An incredible array of great releases, incredible debuts, and so many of them actually charted really well. So you had an interest in music that went across the board, uh, high and low, big and small, indie and all of that, you know, mainstream, all genres, And there was lots of synergy. There was lots of everybody listening to a large amount of things in some ways together. A lot of what had developed in the 90s was gelling by this point on all fronts. And newer things that were bubbling under that would define the 2000s started to hit like emo, punk, pop, electronic a little bit. Rock was exploding in every direction. I mean, explosions everywhere, right? That's why the subtitle... And it's more true for the 2000s than any other decade in history uh, that rock was exploding. Garage, metal, uh, all all kinds of metal, new metal, ambient uh, rock, post-punk, indie. It was just everywhere and will continue to be that way for several more years. Uh, Again, quite a few older artists hitting. A lot of country and Christian artists uh, making good showings. Uh, International as well was still growing. And a big year for women. But the biggest news might be how many of these albums were themed with apocalypse or world war or some big bad thing coming. And all of them were released before 9-11. So people felt something was coming. They didn't know what it was. None of us did. But so, and a part of it is why. The 2000s, Y2K. People had this sense of new millennia and all that stuff. So it was in the air. But still, that's pretty eerie. So tops for the year. Top, number one albums of the year. J-Lo, Janet Jackson, Alicia Keys' debut, Songs in A Minor, Aaliyah's final album. Britney had a number one album. Destiny's Child, Jay-Z's Blueprint. Yes, I put them back to back for a reason. Ja Rule, DMX. Again, just consistent repeats of, of hip-hop artists getting number one albums year after year over and over through this decade. D12's debut, Devil's Night, which is a hip-hop collective from Detroit, D12. Uh, Tupac had a (laughs) posthumous number one. Shaggy, Maxwell, number one album. Michael Jackson, uh, two, if you're scoring at home. So there were two number one albums. NSYNC's last album was in 2001. It was a number one album. Uh, Now that's what I call music, six and seven. I guess five sucked? No, I don't know. Uh, I think, again, people wanted those mixes. Uh, God Bless America, for the benefit of the Twin Towers Fund, was a number one album. was the first charity album to reach number one since We Are the World in 1985. Uh, Garth Brooks is back with a number one album. Dave Matthews Band. I'm going to say this. I never thought I'd mention Dave Matthews Band so much 
over two episodes, and I have always associated him with the 1990s. But you're going to find out, you're going to hear that name a lot. Creed, number one album. System of a Down, Tool, Blink-182, all number one albums. But the winner for the year for the, the, the biggest number one album was the Beatles number one. Beatles one from the previous year was the highest, uh, charting for the most weeks, I guess you could say. Uh, some notable debuts. I'm going to say this often. Most debuts I've seen so far. Proving that the album is, was not dead yet. Not that it died for real, but you know what I mean. A lot of debuts this year, but still not the most. Bilal, a second year in a row, starting with a Philly neo-soul artist, yes. India Ari, another neo-soul, always liked her name. O-Town, Regina Spector debuted in 01. The Bad Plus, excellent jazz uh, ensemble. Michael Buble and Josh Groban debuted in 2001. You know, quiet Storm, baby. John Mayer, Jack Johnson, Granola, Guitar Storm, Kings of Convenience. Uh, nor now reason I mention that they're a Norwegian band, but the name of their debut album is Quiet Is the New Loud. And there was post rock then, which was kind of that. And there was a lot of stuff happening where it was like a response to the louder '90s. Although it wouldn't last long if you know anything about the 2000s. Blake Shelton debuted in 2001. Tenacious D, Jack Black, Andrew WK, Sum 41, Rise Against, American Hi-Fi on the other uh, you know, uh, shelf, Black Rebel Motorcycle Club, Huba Stank. They released an indie album in 98. This is their major label debut. Avenged Sevenfold, Puddle of Mud, Pedro the Lion, Broken Social Scene, Star Sailor, which is on this shelf, The Shins on this shelf, The National, on the shelf. The Von, although I don't think their debut is on the shelf. The Von Bondies. Bunch of, but those are all like, there were a bunch, starting with the Von Bondies, a bunch of garage rock revival bands. If you remember anything about the 2000s, especially early 2000s, lots of, lots of garage rock revival happened. Then The Strokes Is This It was a big one. Uh, Rilo Kylie, Fisher Spooner, and Liars are significant because this kind of alt electro would very, very soon blow up. Nerd, which is Pharrell's band. Loved that album. I Am the World Trade Center. Uh, more, It's more electro, but I'm saying it. I wouldn't even name a band like this. in the day. Like There's 500-some debuts this year. I would leave them out of this list except for the fact that their name, I Am the World Trade Center, they came up with that before the attacks. So, again, eerie. Da -na -na -na, Twilight Zone. Gorillaz debuted in 01. Psy, P-S-Y. The Gangnam Style Dude debuted in 01. Tiesto, excellent DJ uh, techno guy. T.I. and Jake Dilla debuted in 01. Poor Jake Dilla didn't last very long. Other notable, de uh, other notable releases. New Orders Get Ready, one of their best albums, was released in 2001. Daft Punk's Discovery, Bjork, Vespertine, Radiohead Amnesiac, just that string of Radiohead. Honestly, it was a good... 10 or 15 years where they just had a string of amazing albums. Uh, the Soundtrack of Our Lives, a Swedish band, Behind the Music, is a band I loved at the time. Muse, or Origin of Symmetry, uh, is, uh, was a well-known then. Opeth, Blackwater Park, Low, Things We Lost in the Fire, Super Furry Animals, Rings Around the World, on this shelf, Weezer's Green Album, White Stripes, White Blood Cells, the first one of theirs I got. Jimmy Eat World, Bleed American, also first one of theirs I got, and I loved that album. It was actually a huge influence on me and through the middle of the decade and beyond. Which brings us to 2002. In so many ways, 2002 is the first year of the 2000s. And I've said this in other decades, it takes a while for the new decade to bake in. I think because of 9-11, because of other things, it, it it's this is what I think this is this but this is different this is different than the other decades for this reason it seemed to me that 2001 was supposed to be the first true year of the 2000s in the way 
like I said, things were gelling. They were coming together from the development of the 90s and, and presaging things that would happen in the 2000s and the garage rock revival and things that were happening that made it seem like, okay, this is how the decade is taking shape. So now we have an idea of where it's going to go. Some of that remained true. But then after 9-11, there was a hard reset. And that's when the 2000s really began. That's when, And so this year... Much of what defined the 2000s, in fact, happened in 2002. And the previous year, too, like I said, but really 2002 was, oh, we need to reshape some things. A lot of comfort music. Country resurged. Exploded, really. Hip-hop, still very dominant. Alt-rock, still super huge. And for some reason, lots of solo debuts from people from 80s and 90s band, like lots. And if you know anything... I don't mention those unless they went on to huge solo careers that uh, maybe outshined their original album or, or original band or came close to it. And that remains true here. I'm not going to mention all of those. There's just too many. Top albums of 2002. Now that's what I call music nine. So again, so what I say, six and seven, eight didn't make it to number one. Nine did. Celine Dion had a number one album. Elvis's number one. So the Beatles had a number one with their one number ones, and Elvis had a number one with his number ones. Oh, Brother, Where Art Thou? Soundtrack. Loved it. It's uh, in a somewhere. I put my soundtracks in a booklet. Alan Jackson, Kenny Chesney, Toby Keith, Dixie Chicks, Shania Twain, Faith Hill all had number one albums in 2002. It's a lot of country. Dave Matthews. Again, had a number one album in 2002. Bruce Springsteen's The Rising, one of his best, I'm told. Santana had a number one album again. Creed, number one album, I think again. Disturbed, number one album. Alanis Morissette had a number one album in 2002. Who knew? She knew. J. Lo, another number one album. Ashanti's debut went to number one. Music Soul Child rose to number one in 2002. Nelly had another number one. Big Timers. Is a thing. Jay Z, also number one. P. Diddy and the Bad Boy Family. The Eight Mile soundtrack was number one. God, how great. The Eminem show topped the year for number ones. It was the most successful album at its time. So, it, you know, between Eight Mile and Eminem and the Eminem show, that was really Eminem's year. Notable debuts. Not as many as 2001, but pretty darn close. Um, I would have said 2001 was the peak, and then I learned differently. Hot, Hot Heat, one of my favorite freaking bands. Excellent album, Look It Up. I think it's Make Up the Breakdown, something like that. 2002, OK Go debuted in 02. Interpol, 30 Seconds to Mars, We Are Scientists, another band I really like. The Vines from uh, Australia, excellent band. Highly evolved, I think. Against Me, with an exclamation point, uh, debuted all american rejects audio slave the uh you know what's his name uh chris cornell breaking benjamin my chemical romance debuted in 02 taking back sunday coheed and cambria so you're really hearing about bands that are kind of emo post-punk slightly progressive in some ways really starting to define what's happening here and you will know us by the trail of dead speaking of in 02 mastodon debuted one of the few metal bands that i got into in the subsequent decade. Lordy, Finnish, uh, I think, black metal band. Fin you know, Finland, Norway. What's going on over there? You got a lot of real dark music, which I love. I'm just asking. Polyphonic Spree, The Used, The Walkmen, The Decemberists, The Libertines, debuted in 02, and that's just a smattering of the alt bands that debuted. Maroon 5's actual debut, debut in, on, in their new name was 02. Black Keys, Iron and Wine, Jason Mraz, Robin Thicke, Justin Timberlake solo in 02, Peter Bjorn and John. It's a band I got into a little later on. Uh, K-pop megastar Rain, if you know anything about K-pop. Huge, 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 huge. Legendary. Debuted in 02. Avril Lavigne, Vanessa Carlton, Nora Jones, Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings. So that's two Jones if you're scoring at home. Solange Schnalls, debuted in 02. Flow a Tree. Cody Chestnut, headphone masterpiece, I think. No, yeah, no, I don't know. But that's on the, one of these shelves. CeeLo Green, 
DO2, RJD2, Out HUD. So a lot of electronic music happening. Again, David Guetta, another perfect example. LP, uh, Clips, Talib Kweli from, um, oh man, you know, with the, the man with most deaf, The Streets, the British uh, hip hop artist, debuted in 02. And David Cross's Shut Up, You Fucking Baby was his debut stand up album. One of the first to put on record jokes about 9-11. I love the packaging of it, and I loved that, and I've always loved David Cross. Other notable releases in O2, Beck's Sea Change, which is just sublime. Bowie's Heathen, which I ended up listening to many, many years later, really enjoyed. Elvis Costello, When I Was Cruel, enjoyed that. George Harrison's Brainwashed, of course, posthumously released. He had died in late November 01. Two albums from Tom Waits that were considered great. Two from Badly Drawn Boy, one of which was the soundtrack to About a Boy. Wilco Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. I remember listening to this in my daughter's bedroom in when she was two years old, because she was born in 2000, and just feeling like this is the perfect music to listen to in this setting. Spoon, Kill the Moon. Coldplay, Rush of Blood to the Head. Really good album. Doves, The Last Broadcast. One of my favorites from them, probably my favorite from them. Sigur Rush with the parentheses it was an O2. Flaming Lips, Yoshimi Battles, the Pink robot, Robots. Nothing is better from them, I think, than that. Uh, I know that the Soft Bulletin or whatever. Supergrass, Life on Other Planets. Clinic, Walking with Thee. I have that. I love it. Uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, by the way, I believe I have said that's my favorite album of theirs. Pearl Jam's Riot Act, an, an excellent album uh, of theirs, kind of mid-period. Weezer's Maladroit. They were on a roll in the early 2000s. Foo Fighters, one by one. Oh, my God. We're going to see them in a couple of weeks. Queens of the Stone Age, Songs for the Deaf, an amazing freaking record. Missy Elliott, Under Construction. She started in the 90s, but in many ways ruled the 2000s, just in so many ways. Two albums from Nas that were well-received. Scarface's The Fix, one of my top faves of 2002. And he ruled the 2000s. The Roots Phrenology, another top fave. And another Philly guy, this guy Nick, whose final release was the album The Metro Grand Sessions, uh, from which the featured song of this episode comes. It's a song called All the, On The One. I'll talk about it later. It is the uh, t- the opening track of The Metro Grand Sessions. It's the last album I released under the name Nick. It's, the, uh, it's not the last anything, because I've done some reissues and some other things, but... That was 2002 before I decided to uh, shift gears for so many reasons. Speaking of shifting gears, we are going to take a break right now and we'll uh, talk again after the mid-roll. Hey, so I was going to do the usual and just list all of the links that I'd love for you to check out, but I realized that everything you need to know and everywhere you need to go is at nickdematio.com. That really is the hub. I list all the links in every episode just in case, but nickdematio.com is where I put everything that I do. If you want to know more about this podcast, whether it's the audio version or the YouTube version at youtube.com slash app music is not a genre or wherever else the podcast shows up, or if you want to support the podcast at patreon.com slash music is not a genre just go to nickdematio.com it's all there if you want to check out my full discography of original music and covers for my band rec rec and beyond it's at nickdematio.com including all the streaming and social links for wherever you listen to music and wherever you check out your soch uh, my acting clips are there, my voiceover clips are there, graphic design, my blog, and most especially, it's the best place to contact me. If you go to nickdomadio.com slash contact or just hit the contact is on every single page, you can send me a note, say hello, ask me any questions you'd like, you get a newsletter a few times a month, and if you have a project of your own and need work done for it, whether it's audio editing or music or voiceover or graphic design or if you have an event and you need live music go to nickdomadio.com contact me say hello let me know what you need i'd love to hear from you thanks for listening let's get back to the show all right we are back from the mid rope I, I i swear if i get patreon.com slash music is not a genre or the gofundme and if i get enough funds i'm gonna redo the mid roll i'm gonna redo my uh, opening teaser trailer you're gonna see so many changes please consider that but let's get back to the 2000s 6.1 so the the first half of the 2000s for this episode 
We are in 2003. So, of course, as always happens, after a degree of stability and coming together, which we did do to some degree in, in, in you know, after 9-11, though I'm going to say not as much as we remember, because as soon as all the bullshit with the war started, everybody took their sides, etc., etc., but it did last for a period. Then everything started breaking apart by 2003, and also the year of the blackout here in New York City. Another way we came together for a brief period. There were more number one albums this year in 03 than any previous year in history. 34 number one albums. Wouldn't be the most ever, but still. Music was truly fracturing. We wouldn't see how much it fractured until later on. Same with the culture, but it was starting. Also, this was the year that contest winners started to, to get real famous. And that would continue for a while. I guess in some ways still has. Lots of hip-hop, although most of it was unremarkable. Uh, and indie, rock, and metal, same thing. So it was kind of an interesting year in that you had this amazing year for music in 2001, one of the best in history. You had 02, which was a great follow-up to 01, and also an excellent year in music. And then 03 was kind of like, meh, right? So, top albums, 34 this is why I'm so exhausted from this episode. This, this two episodes uh, that I, they're just the research itself was exhausting. Here are 34 number one albums for the year of 2003: Godsmack, Lincoln Park, Marilyn Manson, Stained, Metallica, Led Zeppelin, live triple al- album, Shania Twain, Dixie Chicks or the Chicks, Alan Jackson, Toby Keith, Clay Aiken's debut, John Mayer again, Ruben Stuttered's debut, and I think, I guess he did more after that, so in contest, dude, Luther Vandross's final album before he died, R. Kelly, again, Monica, Ashanti, Mary J. Blige, you just would continue still to this day, Alicia Keys, again, Beyonce's debut solo album, In 03, Madonna had another great album. Britney had another great album. Kelly Clarkson's debut, another contest person. Hilary Duff, Nora Jones, the Isley Brothers, who I mentioned them before. They started in the mid-1950s, and they're still around, some of them at least, still doing music. They put out something last year. I don't know if anybody can say that they've been around that long. I mean, they influenced the Beatles, right? Bad Boys 2 soundtrack, the 8 Mile soundtrack, again. Compilation from the Neptunes, which I freaking loved and still have. Outcasts, Speaker Box, Love Below, that's the double, you know, where they each kind of took their turn. Ludacris, DMX, Jay-Z's Black Album, all number ones, but the winner for the year is 50 Cent's Get Rich or Die Trying. That was his debut. Notable debuts as well. Again, almost as huge as 2001, more than 2002, but still not the most ever yet. Uh, And not nearly as many earth-shaking debuts as 01. There were some. For example, Amy Winehouse's debut in 03. Joss Stone, Yeah, Yeah, Yeah's, Evanescence, so some big ones. Shine Down, Animal Collective, Motion City Soundtrack, I have that. uh, It's not a soundtrack, that's the name of the band. The Rapture, The Darkness, I Believe in a Thing Called Love! The Mars Volta, Three Days Grace. The Mars Volta was the at the drive-in dude who created a new band, whatever. I've listened to every single one of their albums. Fall Out Boy, debuted in 03. Jet, Get Born. Kings of Leon, Gavin DeGraw, Dirks Bentley. Mark Ronson uh, did his own album thing in 03. Dizzy Rascal, British hip-hop dude, debuted in 03, the year after the streets. Two of my favorites from that country. Killer Mike. From Run the Jewels, an LP uh, debuted the year before, so that kind of cool. And Joe Budden also debuted in 03. Other notable releases, uh, Fountains of Wayne, Welcome Interstate Managers. Uh, A moment for Fountains of Wayne, Welcome Interstate Managers. This is a top five album for me, I think, pretty much ever, and always will be. Long live Adam Schlesinger. White Stripes Elephant, amazing album. Muse Absolution, Zwan's only album. That was Billy Corgan's, uh, I would say, post Smashing Pumpkins, but then they reformed. Postal Service's only album, and I mention it because I loved it. And it got stuck in a rental car CD player, and I don't have it anymore. Death Cab for Cuties, Transatlanticism. They were on a roll. 
And they just put out a recent album, I think, last year that was really good. Dashboard Confessionals and Mark, a mission, a brand, a scar. Love it. Cursive, The Ugly Organ. I discovered Cursive on Pandora a few years later and uh, got all their music from Frostwire and LimeWire, uh, or some of it. Ryan Adams, Rock and Roll. Uh, I know you got a lot of things to say about Ryan Adams, but that is a really good album. Shins, Shoots Too Narrow. The guy that worked with me on 2002's The Metro Grand Sessions, my last album under the name Nick, was slated to work with the Shins in Albuquerque uh, in 2002, and died of a, a brain uh, and a, a tumor. I've mentioned it before. He knew he was going to die and just hope he'd last long enough. But uh, that. So Super Furry Animals, Phantom Power. I have it. My, my morning jacket, it still moves. Strokes Room on Fire. I didn't like it as much as Is This It, but I did enjoy it. Uh, Radiohead's Hail to the Thief. AFI Sing the Sorrow. What a great freaking album. But uh, one of my tops for 03 is Kish is Basement Jax's Kish Cash. If you want some good, fun, interesting electronic music, Kish Cash from Basement Jax. Pink's third album, well received. Another great Missy Elliott and MF Doom. Which brings us to 2004. And believe it or not, it's the last year that I am going to cover uh, in this episode. I'll have some conclusions and things like that. But that means that 6.2... Uh, for, you know, which would be next week, is going to have the last five years of the 2000s, you would think that's an even split. And I wish it was. But 2000, oh man, I don't even want to spoil it. Let's just say there's a lot that's going to happen in the second half of the 2000s. So 2004, though 2003 had did have a few highlights, 04 to me was a somewhat better music year. Uh, not amazingly better, but somewhat better. Not really settling down at all. Again, a lot of the disparate things. Quality was still wildly variable, but there were some big albums and big debuts. Once again, ton of hip hop. Again, most of it un currently unknown, unremarkable. And no offense to them, there might have been some great stuff. Same with the rock music, though. There was a lot of things happening there that never went anywhere, including lots of experimental rock and a lot of rock bands going for poignancy and sincerity which I imagine was an offshoot of 9-11. There was that whole thing of irony being dead, which lasted a couple of years or less. And so this was a period where bands and people outside the music culture were really going for that kind of poignant, sincere. Quite a few notable, though, electronic albums in 04. This year was, in a way, after the uh, resetting of 02 and the kind of who knows where we're going in 03, this was kind of 04 was kind of embracing the state of things and bracing for more chaos to come in the decade this is how i put it embracing embracing sounds like life top number one albums for the year now that's what i call music 16 and 17 look i i love compilation albums like this you know all the ktel records and all that stuff freaking love them i never got any of these because i didn't necessarily need them or want them but i respect them a ton and i think if i looked up if i correctly as of now you know 20 some years after or 30 years whatever 20 some years after they debuted i think there's like 90 some now that's what i call music albums which is just absolutely incredible but I never thought I would mention that phrase so much, and I'm not done. Between this episode and next week's episode, I am not done saying, now that's what I call music. Nor am I done saying, Dave Matthews, it's going to happen a lot. Uh, so again, that's an indication, though, that this is still very much a pre-download dominant culture. Even though downloads had been happening for years, the primary way to ingest music was still CDs and, and the radio, believe it or not, in 04. This was just true, which is why albums like that continued to sell. Uh, and another number one album, more number one albums, Rascal Flatts, George Strait, Alan Jackson, Tim McGraw, Kenny Chesney, a lot of freaking country. And that was that was a thing in the 90s that that's again, you know, resurged here. Jimmy Buffett, Rod Stewart had number one albums in 04. Josh Groban, Nora Jones. So that's another one. Alicia Keys yet again, just dominant. Ashley Simpson's debut was number one. Avril Lavigne again. Green Day, American Idiot. 
and U2 how to dismantle an atomic bomb. I mean, so this was definitely a better year than 03. It just was. Velvet Revolver. Some I heard somebody from uh, Rolling Stone uh, on their podcast say that Green Day's American Idiot may be the last classic rock album ever. I disagree. I think more have been released since then, primarily in the, the decade we're talking about. But it has to rank up there as one of the most recent classic albums. Uh, oh, yeah, Velvet Revolver. So that's Wyland and the people from, I think, Guns N' Roses, whatever. They debuted in 04. Uh, not debuted. I'm sorry. They had a number one album in 04. Beastie Boys to the Five Burrows, which they themselves have denigrated and other people say is not their favorite. It's one of my favorite albums of theirs. You know, not to, not just because it is a dedication to New York City after everything that happened and they took their time getting it out. They didn't release it in 02, which they could have. But they but they and they created an album with some memorable lines and everything like that. But just I just like the feel of it because it's so, you know, after all the amazing stuff that they did in the 90s, which was very heavily produced and layered. This was very kind of old school, kind of not very layered. And uh, and I like both ways, but I like this. Uh, Linkin Park with Jay-Z had a number one album. R. Kelly with Jay-Z had a number one album. It's Jay-Z, talk about the king. Eminem's Encore, number one. Nelly, Ludacris, Jada Kiss, Lloyd Banks' debut, Twista, D12 again, Outkast again, all number one albums. Hip-hop was dominant, but the winner for the year is Usher's Confessions. Top album of 2004. Some notable debuts in 04. Again, huge number, more than 03, still not the most. Don't be frightened. Be frightened for next week, though. Uh, debuts, The Killers, The Hold Steady, The Future Heads. If you don't know them, look them up. One of my favorite bands from Britain that I don't know what they're doing now. Franz Ferdinand in 04, Keen, Kasabian, Secret Machines, Hawthorne Heights, Death From Above 1979. One of the bands featured in my weird band names. TV on the radio, Scissor Sisters, Arcade Fire debuted in 04. So a lot of bands that would coast into the 2010s even with some big stuff. Drive-By Truckers, Big and Rich, Gretchen Wilson, KT Tunstall debuted in 04. James Blunt, Diplo, Tycho, Hot Chip. Electro, electro stuff, just a lot of electro stuff. More and more will be coming in this decade. Kanye debuted in 04. Took him many, many more years to go completely insane. Modest Yahoo debuted in 04. And yes, I purposely put the Jewish rapper Modest Yahoo right after Kanye in this list. They both debuted in 04. Fun. Uh, middle finger. Akon, Pitbull debuted in 04. John Legend <laughs> debuted in 04. Gwen Stefani solo debuted in 04. So some big stuff. Definitely more than 03. Other notable releases in 04. Courtney Love solo album was a damn good album. Uh, the Grey album from Danger Mouse, which of course mixed uh, Jay-Z's Black album with the Beatles' White album. Freaking love it. Mastodon's Leviathan, amazing from them. Bjork Medulla. Ted Leo and the Pharmacist Shake the Sheets. Mad Villainy. Morrissey, You Were the Quarry, one of his best, or whatever you think about him. Sufjan Stevens, Seven Swans. This guy was kind of dominant in his own little corner of the world in the 2000s and beyond. Dizzy Rascal's second album, very good, very good. Not, maybe not as good as the first, but very good. Kings of Leon's second album. My Chemical Romance's second album. So a lot of great second albums. And I liked that one, My Chemical Romance. Modest Mouse, Good News for People Who Love Bad News is my favorite from them. I don't know much else about them, frankly. Mmm Food from MF Doom. Love everything about that. And the album is supposedly great. From a basement on the hill, Elliot Smith, who was very dominant until he died in, in, in that kind of, you know, depressed singer songwriter thing. Brian Wilson, Smile, I have. It's great. It's great. Tom Waits, Real Gone. So he was on a roll in the early 2000s. Prince's Musicology, a huge comeback for him. And that's the year also, 04, was the year I saw him in concert. Great. Uh, I think Cinnamon Girls on that and not the Neil, Neil Young one. It's a, it's a different song. Uh, Musicology, the song itself, just a great album. Just a really, really, you know, uh, worthy album from Prince. Which brings me to conclusions for this half of the 2000s. Uh, my head is spinning. 
We're only halfway done and it gets worse. Be warned. You can probably also feel the big and little explosions everywhere that I alluded to in the subtitle and the chaos that was set off in this decade and more of it is to come. There was a real excitement in the first half of the decade. Whatever music you liked, whatever, whatever music you liked, there was a ton of it and more and more and more. I talked about this in the episode I did about there being more rock bands in the 2000s than any other time. And I know now that that list of 200 plus brands that I read off quickly, I already missed a bunch. And some of them I've mentioned already and will continue to mention in next week's episode. But it was true for every kind of music. There was more and more. I ate up a bunch of the hip hop and electro in that decade. And there was enough of it to go around that you can find your flavor. And you didn't have to look hard. And again, yeah, there was stuff on the internet, but this was pre streaming pre the dominance of downloading so like mp3s and all of that so the fact that that was all available on cd and easy to find was pretty amazing rock and hip-hop still largely ruled but the whispers of the electronic revolution were getting louder and louder each year same with the digital music format revolution uh, as most music was still being bought on cd by far in the middle of the, the the decade of the 2000s but speaking of Bonus M Extra Video, yet again, the history of digital music format. Not digital music, not electronic music, that's different, but the format of digital music. Patreon.com slash music is not a genre. You will be amazed at how far back digital music format goes. I will save other conclusions of the decade for the second half uh, next week. Featured song on this episode, as I mentioned, is from uh, the Metro Grand Sessions, the last album I did under the artist name Nick, all caps. And it's the opening track on The One. Like with saying goodbye to the 1990s, my 2000 album, the Metro Grand Sessions, was a farewell, in a sense, to what I thought of as my solo career. It was meant to be uh, something else. It was meant to actually be the breakout of the solo career and and kind of the way of, of, of stating my name and more, you know, more publicly and more widespread. But because Mike Klein, the producer, as I mentioned, who was to go on to work with the Shins but didn't, died, a lot of that machine just stopped dead. So it, it kind of, it, it floundered uh, in that sense, although it has a very rich life online. You can look it up, Metro Grand Sessions, link is below, and you'll get to hear that song on the one shortly. Songs from that album have been featured in movies. The song Scream, one of people's favorites, was on a, a show on MTV for quite a while. The only song I haven't shared yet from this album is the, is the one that I am sharing this week on the one, that one, pun intended, album opener. It is both a musical reference, if you know anything about on the one, hitting it on the one, you know, that's a kind of a, uh, what's his name, dude? Yeah, great, my mind is blanking, but the one being the first beat and a strong one, so hitting on the one. Uh, well-known in funk and jazz and all that. And also, The One is referring to whomever I was directing my attention to, uh, God, myself, you, my dad in one verse. It's a suitably moody opener for a suitably moody uh, period in history. Uh, And you'll get to hear it in a minute or two, less than that. Some questions. What are your favorite albums from the first half of the 2000s? Do you remember the explosion of music in every direction? Did you feel like you knew where things of going were going uh, by the middle of the 2000s? And were you right? I would love to know your answers to these questions and anything else you have to say, because as always, my objectives here are music, conversation, and connection. Thank you for hanging. Get ready for part two of the 2000s next week. Coming down on the line, even this can be fun. Can't see where you'll be when it's done. But me, I'll be in